another viewer request video. Hey, Fuji XT2. Um, anybody wants to join me in Key West here in about seven or ten days, let me know. I'm going to be down at my other house in Fort Myers, Florida. Fuji X-T2. Um, why you shouldn't buy a Fuji X-T2? Said nobody with a brain. <laughs> so, apparently some obscure channel made a video saying that the X-T2 was expensive. Some small little photography channel. And everybody's like, oh my god, you can make a rebuttal video to that video. I was like, why? Why should I care? Why do you care? And then Amar Talwar made a rebuttal video to that video. <laughs> and he basically excoriated... The um, peoples that made that video. Um, so here's the X-T2. Uh, yeah, okay. So <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, let me see. Uh, I've been fixing, repairing cameras for 20 years. I own more cameras than God. Uh, I know how to fix things. I know how things work. Uh, I know how things are built. And our, the Fuji X-T2 is not only uh, an incredible value at $1,600. Fuji doesn't give me a damn thing, by the way. You know, they're not yanking my strings. They don't have their hand up my butt to tell me, you know, to say one thing one way or the other. It's currently the best made camera out there. It is. It's undeniable. It is. It's currently the best made camera. Some people said, well, you know, so-and-so took it out in a rainstorm and ended up having corrosion damage. Well, I've said in absolutely every video, and you can ask anybody that works and repairs on cameras, you know, mention the word weather sealing or weatherproof. You know, they'll just laugh their butt off because all they do is uh, fix. If it wasn't for that, people, stupid people buying weatherproof or weather sealed cameras, taking them out in the rain and getting them damaged and taking them repair. They would have no business, well, basically very little business, because there's no such thing as a weather-sealed or weatherproof camera, so none of that crap matters, nor does it apply to the Fuji X-T2 either. It's made in Japan. It's absolutely the tits. It's a cat's ass. It's built like a tank. It's built like a brick outhouse. It is an incredible value at $1,600 plus. Obviously, that does not come with lens or vertical grip. Um, it's not expensive, nor are Fujifilm lenses expensive. Um, I don't know what is it they have to reiterate about the Fuji X-T2. Um, it's an incredible camera. This one, I got two of them. This one's headed with me to Florida, just as the same as it happened, you know, like five or six months ago. Had it with me in Florida. Shot the hell out of it. I'm going to shoot the hell out of this one, too. Um, yeah, I even took it to the beach. Um... The Fuji X-T2 and the X-T2 system, while Fuji's been making lenses now for decades, the uh, X-Trans lenses, uh, they are rolling them out at uh, uh, a moderate speed. The 80mm macro is about to come out. They have plenty of lenses. I mean, the only thing Fuji's lacking in is uh, hardcore um, sports and action. Uh, what would its equivalent, the Nikon D500, beat its ass on? It beats its ass, the Fuji's ass, on hardcore sports action glass. There's no doubt about that. Uh, the Nikon is a much better performer at high ISO. It is. I mean, the Fuji high ISO performance will pound the piss out of every Fuji out there. It will. Like the Nikon D500, Nikon D5, which I absolutely cannot stand, but the Nikon D500, pound the hell out of it. It's not made as well. It costs more money, and it's a plastic camera made in Thailand. This is a magnesium chassis camera that's absolutely built exquisitely for less money, made in Japan. So, high ISO performance is nowhere near as good as on the, on the Suji camera as it is on the Nikon D500. Okay, okay, okay. And if it's going to come to uh, shooting birds and wildlife and, uh, you know, some heavy glass, Fuji doesn't have it. The Nikon owns it. Okay, okay. There's no perfect camera, so is that anything to bitch about? Well, if you're a wildlife shooter or a, a, a low-light, uh, you know, blind uh, mole rat sort of shooter that likes shooting in uh, dank clubs or, uh, you know, uh, brandy and sandy or bumping and grinding on the stage and their G-strings and their pasties, <laughs> you know, this isn't the camera for you. <laughs> Good analogy there, isn't it? Everything else, it's awesome. The lenses are made much better than Nikon's current lens lens. Nikon still actually does make some limited, hardcore, all-metal Japanese lenses. They're very expensive. Most of Nikon stuff, though, is now Chinese plastic crap. It's okay. It's still made a lot better. You know, the optics, especially on ultra-wide lenses, well, really good stuff. Um, 
Fuji has its advantages and Nikon has its advantages. Um, I shot an event with this on Sunday. The day before that, I was shooting the Nikon D500. I had no issues going back and forth between the two. Of course, it wasn't a low light event, but I mean, no issues with speed light. It does high speed sync. It actually does high speed sync with flash compensation better than the Nikon does. Um, so, this is a viewer request video. I don't know what else to say about the X-T2 since I've actually already beaten it to death over and over again. I don't think there really requires to be a rebuttal video about the Nikon. I mean, eh, the Fuji X-T2 does there? No. Wait a minute, i got to sniff the daffodils. <sighs> What's that old saying? you got to stop and sniff the flowers or something like that. Man, it's going to be cold here, and I'm going to be down in that 80-degree weather. Yeah. <laughs> in my Speedo, which I don't own, by the way, as far as you know. Um, this is currently, you know, given those limitations... Because people, uh, you know, on the photography, right? am I that, you know, did that? yeah, that's true. The Nikon D500 performs better at high ISO. The Nikon has the serious hardcore glass. And also the buffer, too. The, the third thing that the Nikon has advantage over. So, right, you have high ISO performance, the hardcore big-ass glass, the buffer performance. I mean, this is rocking two SD cards. And the D500, for example, has the XQD card in slot one. Uh, the buffer combined with that XQD card slot, which is smoking fast, is nearly bottomless. You know, it, it'll just smoke the dog shit out of the Fuji X-T2. There's no denying it, there's no arguing it. The D500 on the buffer will just smoke the piss tar out of the Fuji. Still don't give a crap. It is rare and far between where I'm just, you know, really ripping them off rare. Does it happen? It sure does. If that's what you need to do, then this isn't the camera for you. For everything else, this is it, and it's a great value. There is nothing else out there that's Japanese-made, magnesium, uh, chat, you know, this kind of value, production quality, it doesn't frigging exist. It's this and nothing else. And this is also including the X-Pro2. This is also includes the X100F. Which, by the way, is packed over my bag there. I love that camera. I've been waiting so long for it. There's nothing else out there that can match it, especially at that price. Nothing. Some people brought up like the Sony uh, RX-R1, the new version, which is like 3800 or something, isn't it? That's, one th that's a third the price. $1,300. It's made better. It works better. Faster. Auto yeah, I know it's a full frame mirrorless with a leaf shutter. And this is a DX, but it still has better straight out of camera. That camera, by the way, that Fuji X100F, has the best damn straight out of camera images of any camera, let me repeat, any camera I've ever tested, ever. And that's a lot of cameras. So, there it is. This is the video rebuttal people wanted me to make. Don't buy the Fuji X-T2, said nobody with a brain. <laughs> yeah. blank stare. <laughs> Catch you later. Catch you in Key West, Florida if you want to <sighs> join me. We'll go to the nude beach and skinny dip and rub cocoa butter on each other. <laughs> They're not going to do that. That costs extra. <laughs>